welcome to Are You Up Babs? I'm so glad you've joined me this morning as we look at the Word of God together. And we're going to start off by reading Matthew chapter 24 from verse 3. I'm reading from the ANPC version, the Amplified Version. While he was seated on the Mount of Olives, Jesus, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us when this will take place and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end, the completion and the consummation of the age. Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in on the strength of my name, appropriating the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled. For this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in place after place. All this is but the beginning. The early pains of the birth pangs of the intolerable anguish. So Jesus is speaking and he is telling us about the coming of the end times and actually starts by telling us very daunting things. He speaks of nations against nations and the correct translation of the word nation is ethnos, which means heathen, race or tribe. And what Jesus was saying is there would be wars or rumors of wars between races and they will be promoted. Those wars and the rumors of wars will be promoted by demons. It will be the spirit of the Antichrist to bring communism in the world so that a one world ruler can step in. Now, you have to remember who you are. You are a child of God. Don't get involved in all of that stuff. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get distracted. You are not going to yield to all that devil stuff. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, There is now no distinction, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is not male and female, for you are all one in Christ. Yeah, God is saying that Jesus is the head and we are the body. Picture that. Jesus the head we the body, one man. God is all about unity. Unity, one body, one heart, one mind in Christ. When God looks at the earth, he doesn't see races. When God looks at the earth, he sees two groups. He sees the believer or the unbeliever. He sees the saved or the unsaved. He sees the church, the newborn believer, or he sees the lost. The lost are those who are dead in their sins and they are bound for hell. We are not going to get sucked into hating people. Jesus taught us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate you, to pray for those who persecute you. So when Jesus says, this is the beginning, there is more to come. In this time that we've already experienced and in the times to come, people have experienced a lot of emotion. People have experienced an immense amount of grief. People have experienced confusion and doubt about the future, anger, frustration. These are emotions and we need to deal with them. And time often helps us to deal with them. The Bible speaks of grief being actually a very normal thing. And it speaks of there is a time for grief. In other words, we need to allow time to heal the grief. God will heal us. As it is with all of these emotions when we bring them to God. However, fear is not an emotion. Fear is more deadly than these other emotions I've spoken about. Why? Because fear is a spirit. God's told us in his word, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power and of a sound mind through his Holy Spirit. So the real battle we are fighting is fear. 
evil people want to rule the world and fear is their number one weapon. They're using fear to herd us like cattle into their way of behavior, in their way of thinking, in order to take away our freedom. And we must not allow them to do that. Fear will overcome you. Do not let fear overcome you. Have nothing to do with fear. Luke 21 verse 26, Jesus said, There will be men fainting from fear and the concern of things to come. As men hear of rumors and of things to come, they will literally faint of fear. However, this should not be the case for the believer, those who are children of God, because Jesus said he would leave us with something. He said, my peace, I leave you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Actually, when you see all of this trouble happening, you can look up into the heavens because your redemption is drawing near. That's what the Bible says if you go and read that passage. Your deliverance is drawing near. Instead, we should occupy till Jesus comes. We should be about the work of the Father. We should be taking care of our family. We should be witnessing to the lost. It is the lost who are full of fear and they are in desperate need for guidance and instruction. Do you see the incredible responsibility we have? We cannot be full of fear. We need to ensure we are in the presence of God, that our hearts are filled with peace and calm, that we are looking up, waiting for the deliverance of God, because there are those who are lost, who are looking to us to lead them and guide them, to give them instruction. And when we point them to Jesus, they too can experience that peace. Luke 21 verse 36 says this, Keep awake then and watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive and ready, praying that you may have full strength and ability to be accounted worthy to escape all these things that will take place and to stand in the presence of God. So we need to have full strength. The church is the ark of Noah in these days. If you are a born again believer, you are in the ark and God will take care of you. God will protect his people. In John 14, Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't permit or allow yourself to be agitated or disturbed by what you hear. Jesus says, you can have peace because I have overcome. The responsibility to overcome is Jesus's and he will do it. But our responsibility is to have peace. God will deliver us. Once you have this kind of assurance, nothing will shake you, not rumors of wars, not wars itself, because of our shield of faith. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not about the rumors and the wars to come, but faith comes by hearing the word of God. Fear is perverted faith. Faith is the confidence that God will save me. Fear is putting our confidence in the ability of the devil to hurt us. Faith opens the door for God. Just as fear opens the door for the devil to bring destruction and problems into our lives. Close that door. Take heart. Have his peace as the atmosphere of your heart. For he has overcome. The world is needing deliverance. We can look up and see our redemption is drawing near. We can look up and see God is going to deliver us, but the lost cannot confidently do that. And so while we are waiting, we need to occupy the earth, bringing deliverance to the lost by introducing them to a loving father who wants to save them, who wants to fill their hearts with peace too. Can I encourage you today? to phone loved ones, to ask them how they are doing, to see what you can pray for. And if their heart is lost, it is so easy to minister. Pray and ask God to give you wisdom as you speak to them, to allow his Holy Spirit to speak through you. Don't make it your responsibility. Make it the Holy Spirit's responsibility. As you are obedient to do the work, the Holy Spirit will do the work through us. I want to encourage you, minister to people. They've been waiting for your call. While you're all nervous and anxious to do it, they are waiting for your call to 
ministered to them that they would have peace in their heart. And so let us do that today. Minister to people in our worlds. They are waiting for Jesus to save them. Jesus is waiting for us to introduce them to him. What a wonderful God we have. And so let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we hear of things, Lord, our faith would stand firm because it is your faith, your word that fills our hearts, Father. I pray that our hearts would stay in a place of peace. I pray, Father God, that we would not be disturbed by what we hear, but we would be able to look up and know that you will deliver us, that our redemption draws near. I pray, Father, we would stand firm and we would draw all men to you. We thank you for your love, your mercy and your grace, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, and you truly are a very present help in times of need. We love you, Father. We worship and honor and praise you. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, as every person phones, you would give them the confidence and the assurance. And when they put that phone down, Lord, they would know that you have done a mighty work in the person's life they called as well as in theirs. We thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will do a mighty work in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Until next week.